myself, Sophie Gur, from Samshitri Vidya Niketan Mangal. From uh, during the last lecture of our general science, we discussed about the second natural resource, that is water. Okay? We already discussed the first natural resource, that is air, and half part of the second natural resource, that is water. Today, we are going to learn the remaining part of uh, the natural resource, water, and the third natural resource, land. Okay? Now, during the last lecture, we discussed about how water is important to us for different day-to-day uh, -day activities or purposes like bath, cooking or washing the clothes. Okay? So, these are the different uses of water. Now, on page number 5, there is one picture of 1.6 diagram uses of water on the earth. Now, first, there is one question of the right discuss. For which purposes is water being used? One question is there, the answer you will find in that picture. Now, look at the picture 1.6. In that, you have seen some women washing the clothes in the river. Okay? Then, one man washing the truck uh, beside the river or banks of the river. Okay? So, there is one well also, one pipe comes from the river and the water from the river is used for the agricultural purpose. So, then two persons are swimming in the water. So, such means river is useful for different purposes like washing the clothes, then washing the vehicles, then swimming or bathing, then for agricultural purposes. Okay? So, these are the different uses of the water. Now, two other living in use water like you. What is the answer of this question? No. We use uh, the maximum amount of water from the natural resources, but other living things use water only for drinking purpose. They don't have other use of water. Okay, understand? Now, we use water in large quantities. We have done that water on the earth is regulated to the water cycle. Now, what do you mean by water cycle? For example, this is the water on the ground in the form of oceans okay or seas now what will happen there is sun upside from sun there is a heat which reaches to the ocean water or sea water and from that the water get evaporated evaporated is what the water or liquid state of water is converted into gaseous state that is vapor form these vapors again goes upside in the sky, after that, means these vapors are converted into clouds, big clouds, and when air is struck to the cloud, after after striking the air into the cloud, again rain falls in there, and this due to this rainfall, the fresh water comes again on the ground. This is called as water cycle. Okay, so we get fresh water from the oceans and sea in the form of water cycle. So we get the fresh water for drinking purpose. Understand? The water vapors form from the oceans is the main source of water in the water cycle. It gets converted into rain, creating fresh water sources on the earth. So how this water cycle operated? First part, first is the uh, by the sun rays, the heat of the sunlight is reached to the ocean water and sea water. Due to this, uh, this water gets warm or heated and it is converted into vapor form. These vapors are goes upside into the sky and they form the clouds. And when air is struck to the clouds, the rainfall means there is a rain and due to this rain we get fresh water from drinking purpose. We get water from the natural resources. We know that which are the sources of water? <coughs> Lakes, streams, rivers, ponds, okay? Man also constructed dams and birds, okay? So, man also digs well and bore wells from which we get the groundwater or we leave the groundwater. Apart from this, Man also constructed birds and dams. For example, you know the Bandhadara Dam, okay, or Nirvanda Dam, okay. Man is 
man has constructed that dam for storing the water from the rain. Due to the uncontrolled use of water for an increasing population. Now you know that day by day the population of the world goes on increasing. For example, in China and India, these are the most populated countries of the world. So day by day population of the world goes on increasing so that all the human population uses the water for their daily need and therefore there is a shortage of water. It is called as water scarcity. Okay? So due to increasing population, so as the population increases, the industrialization is also increases. Large number of uh, industries were established and therefore industries also require water in large quantities so that due to increasing population for their daily activities of human beings as well as industrialization. Due to this, more and more use of water is carried out and therefore there is a serious problem of water scarcity means there is less availability of water on the land. Okay? So now always remember one point is there. So these are the important points regarding water due to which we are able to save the water. First one is use water spirally. What is it by spirally? means carefully. We must use the water carefully means we should not waste the water. Some precautions should be taken. For example, when we fill the uh, water from the cox, we should put off the cox or we turn off the cox. Then block water, let it percolate. For example, sometimes rain water from the mountains or big hill areas is come downside but it, it could not be saved. So we can percolate or means we, uh, there are some ideas regarding we should uh, um, means percolate the water downside in the ground. Then store water wherever possible. Means we make the ideas regarding the storing of water in different reservoirs. Okay? Reuse of water where, wherever possible. For example, if the rainfall is on the floor of your home, at that time the rain comes down with the help of pipe, we must save that water or we fill that water in the tank so we can reuse that water for bathing purpose or cleaning the clothes. Okay? So these are some important points regarding regarding storing of water or use careful of water. Then next one is that next uh, natural resource. It is land, third natural resource. It is called land. Okay, now you know that how much area of uh, world is occupied by the land? 29%. Understand? So 71% land or sorry 71% of surface of earth is occupied by the water and 29% of surface of earth is occupied by land. Now before starting this point on this natural resource, there are some questions in the sub point can you take. First question, what is the land made up of? So by which material land is made up of? Land is made up of soil. Okay? So means land is made up of soil. Second question, is land flat everywhere? What is mean by flat land? First type of land is called a flat land, means plain. Okay, but we don't see the flat land everywhere. Sometimes the land is hilly area land here. There is sometimes there is some ditch land there. So such type of different types of land you have seen on the earth surface. Understand? So it is not flat everywhere. Third question, what do you see on the land? Now you know that there are different houses or the factories, then uh, tall buildings, then forest, okay? Hills, mountains, different parts or different compartments are there on the land. Then third one, does man produces soil or land? Man is not able to synthesize soil or land. It is natural process. You know that means to manufacture one, one kilogram of soil we require 1000 years. Means naturally for obtaining one kilogram of soil we require 1000 years naturally. Okay. So man is not able to produce soil. It is natural process. Then next one. What has man created on the 
land. So on the land, man has created different factories, then tall buildings, okay, then construction of dams, etc. So man do different activities on the land. If a deep pit is dug in the ground, what do you find there? Now when you observe while digging the pits, in Marathi it is called as khanda, okay, pit. So when we dig the big pits, what did you observe downside? Now first one there is a layer of soil. After that, when you go downside, you will see the large particles of the stones also downside in the pits. Okay, so these are the different questions regarding land. Now we are going to discuss this point in detail. Okay, land is seen in the form of stone, soil, big rocks. Now you know that in some of the places the land is covered by soil. That is means small particles of the soil. Then sometimes it is covered by uh, sand, then big rocks, etc. Big stones are there. So such types of uh, particles are seen in the different places on the land. It is not flat everywhere. Okay? So it is not flat everywhere. It is sometimes there are some pits, then some, some mountains are also there. So the land is not even all the places. It goes on chain. It is hilly in some of the places like this. So this is called as hilly area. Okay? Sometimes land is not even, but it is like a hill station or hill. Then it is hilly in some places and flat in others. All terrestrial animals including man live on the land. Now you know that most of the animals including human beings is lived on the land. Some terrestrial digs burrows in the ground for shelter. For example, grass, they dig burrows downside and they live here. Okay? Rats, then uh, some other animals are the spiders. Okay? Such small and big animals are lying inside the burrow. Okay? Under them. Rabbits are also lived in the borrows of underground of the land surface. Then this, this means that they use land for fulfilling their needs. Okay? Means these animals like rats, spiders, then rabbits, they use the land as their natural habitat, means living place. Understand? We also use the land for farming and building the houses and roads also. Now you know that uh, farming or agriculture is the main occupation of the Indian citizens or Indian people. So that agriculture is one of the most common occupation in India. So farmers use the land for agricultural purposes. Then uh, government also construct roads or railway tracks on the land. Understand? We make use of the plants and animals in the forest that grows on the land. So the forest is also grows on the land. Therefore, we use different plants and animals. They are some product for our use. Okay? Then some natural oil, crude oil, minerals, natural gas, these are obtained from the earth, are very important for us. So these are the natural gas or these are the fuels for vehicles or for LPG gas is obtained from the land, from ground. Okay? So the mineral crude oil, natural gas obtained from the earth are very important for us. It means that land is an important resource. Means we use land for our different purposes. Therefore, land is called as natural resource or important natural resource. Let us see exactly what land is made up of. Now, on page number 6, there is one diagram, 1.8 layers of the land. First, we discuss the different layers of the land from upside to downside. Now, first you have observed the plant is grown on the land. These are the different layers of the soil from upside to downside. The first layer of this soil is called as humus. Humus means what? It is the fertile part. Fertile part of the land is called as humus. Means in the humus, all the nutrients, all the nutrients are available for the plants. Means for example, nitrogen, then phosphorus, 
potassium. These are the important nutrients are, uh, which are important for the growth of the plants. These are available in the humus part of the soil, which is the most layer of the soil, which is called as humus. So, humus is important for the growth of the plants. Then, second layer is called as soil. In soil, there are the small particles, small, small particles are present on the land. These are attached to each other or compactly attached to each other. This small particles is called as soil. Understand? So, second layer of land is covered by the soil. In soil and humus, we have seen the growth of the different plants. Then third word, third layer of this uh, land is called as immature soil. Okay? So, immature soil in that some large particles are seen, means large particles and the soil are seen downside. These are also consist of small stone particles. This is called as immature soil. So in immature soil, when plant when plant grows, the roots go downside in the immature soil. Then fourth one, layer of soil and small rock. When you, you go downside of the immature soil, you will see large stone particles downside along with the soil particles. So small particles of the stones as well as soil particles are seen downside as the it is called as layer of soil and small rocks. Means rock particles as well as soil particles are mixed in the next layer below the immature soil. And after that, the last layer of land, which is called as bedrock, means it is only consists of the large particles of the rocks, which is called as bedrocks. Okay. So this layer is does not consist the soil particles. It only consists of large large particles or large stones of the rocks. Okay. So it is the last layer of the land. Understand? So first layer is humus, second layer is soil, then immature soil, then layer of soil and small rocks and last one is red rock. So the roots of the plant are only reached up to which layer? Immature soil. Okay? So below that the roots are not found. So layer of soil and small rocks and red rocks it is consist of large stone particles. Therefore the new, uh, sorry, the roots are not able to go insert that layer. Okay? So remaining part of the subtopic or natural resource plans we are going to learn in the next lecture. Okay? Thank you.